I Wear My Sunglasses at Night, written by Paul Astor Cohen, narrated by Nikki. Chapter 14 Their car was the only one on the way heading towards the fires, the only car anywhere anymore. The Santa Ana winds had picked up and the smell of burning foliage and debris grew strong. The wind also blew the sun's cover and she was surprised it was daytime. The massive forest smog was thin and exposed her to the sun, and she began to smolder. She rolled down her window to release the ash and smoke beginning to fill up the car. The coyote looked at her singed skin from the passenger side, concerned as he whimpered. It's all right, Shek. I have an idea, she said. If I can just find a damn store that's open. She pulled off the highway and into a convenience store parking lot where a few cars were still gassing up. She got out, smoke emanating from her exposed skin, and entered the store. She could feel all eyes on her as the few customers inside stopped to stare at the smoking woman. The smoke settled to low, thin wisps as she walked up and down the aisles, protected from the sunlight inside the store. "'Do you guys have any sunscreen?' she yelled out to the clerk. Without taking his wide eyes off of her, he pointed to the back. "'Oh, I see it. Thanks.' She walked up to the counter. Her skin was still smoking and trying to heal itself as she set the sunscreen down. How much? T -t Take it. Looks like you need it. Oh, thanks, hon. You're a sweetie. She looked over at a spinning rack full of state maps. Oh, and this too. She reached into her pocket for the money, but the clerk waved her off. Thanks. Have a good day. He watched in disbelief as she exited the store. Smoke rising in large plumes again as she entered the sunlight. She got into her car and drove off. Nikki drove through the neighborhood of families packing up their vehicles last minute with whatever they could carry. Some were crying and hugging one another. Some were standing in front of their houses saying their goodbyes. That's so sad, she said to the coyote who looked up at her. I remember when I was a kid and my grandparents lost their farmhouse to a fire. They had spent their entire lives there. Every memory they had was etched in that old house. Paint peeling, wallpaper fading. But it was theirs, you know? She blinked, shook her head, and focused on the map she had laid out on the dashboard. Anyway, this is where we're going. They have to be here. Nikki pointed to a spot on the map that looked like an old mining camp. New Idria. It's close enough to the fires, and no one would be there since it's a historical site. Should be empty. Nikki placed the palm of her hand over the area on the map. And it feels right, like I can hear them or something. The coyote looked out of the windshield towards the fires in the distance and then laid his head back down. An hour later, the car was parked behind some brush at the base of a large hill, and Nikki got out, followed by Shecky. The two of them climbed up the steep hillside and crawled on their bellies when they neared the peak. From the top of a flat ridge looking down, she could see a group of people gathering around a couple of ambulances and emergency management vehicles parked near a copper-colored pond. She shut her eyes and focused on listening to their conversation. They plan on heading out again, she told the coyote, maybe in an hour or two. No, sounds like two. The fire is getting too close, so they're going to round up the last of the evacuees and do their deed. Probably those families we saw back there. Bastards. The coyote looked over at her with sad eyes. There's nothing we can do about those folks, Shek. We're here for this. We'll deal with those things down there soon enough. Shecky put his nose in the air and sniffed. What is it, boy? The coyote's eyes focused on someone walking out from a mining tunnel. And Nikki saw her, too. She knew it was her, the one that talking head said had ordered Derek to be kidnapped. Dark hair, pale skin, walking around wearing mom jeans and high heels, her midriff showing. She was followed by a man in a tight black shirt and skinny jeans, holding a large umbrella over her. Fucking hipsters, she said to herself. But where was Derek? she asked herself. Shecky continuing to focus on the group below. Was he in one of the shacks surrounding the camp? Was he dead? She hated being so close and unable to act. With such a large group, there was no way she'd survive this time. 
She was lucky to have survived the ones at the tavern who were pretty tough, and here there was more than twenty. She'd be added to the pile of dead meat she'd left behind, for sure. So she laid there with the coyote and waited, the smoke blowing across the gray sky reflecting in her sunglasses, until it was time.